All right, looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another Azuzin session from the underground, hiding from the KGB. How everyone's doing? Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. Um, so, announcements. And what's the topic of today's illegal stream? Um, today we're doing not cock. I'm going to explain what, what it is a little bit later. So let's first make uh, the announcement. So live on Twitch, uh, we're doing not cock, and I'm going to provide the link https twitch.tv slash starting i'm gonna ping everyone who's interested in being pinged there we go the stream has officially started so the uh twitch platform is still not banned uh in russia so i decided to that, that i'm gonna continue streaming until it's completely banned and if it gets banned i'll try to set up some sort of vpn and stuff like that so uh, I'm not getting any money from my streams like whatsoever. Uh, so I decided that I'm going to be using my streams as the platform for promoting the donation link that you can access via the donation donate uh, the command right you can do exclamation mark donate command and um yeah so basically my the only goal for my streams is going to be promoting that thing uh because that's the only thing i can do given the circum circumstances i'm in so yeah hello everyone <laughs> welcome 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 so yeah definitely check out the donate uh sub comment uh and also i would encourage you not to subscribe to me because i'm not getting anyway so you i'm not getting anything anyway so you're just basically wasting money <laughs> well you're not really wasting money you're giving all of the money to amazon essentially uh hello hello everyone welcome 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 so yeah today i'm not going to be doing porth i put the porth development uh on pause for a little bit so i decided to work on um you know on a side project right on a simple side project and the project that i decided to work on is basically like cock but not actually cock do you guys know what is a cock right so um it's actually a very cool thing uh you can you can google it up and cock is a basically proof assistant right uh you can check it out in here so yep cock it's a formal proof management system it provides a formal language to write mathematical definitions executable algorithm theorems and stuff like that it's pretty cool it's pretty sophisticated and in fact it's pretty cryptic right you have to have a pretty solid mathematical background to uh, understand how to use this entire system uh, and I don't know how to use it properly I managed to essentially just prove a couple of theorems a couple of simple theorems using this thing but I never really mastered it uh, but one of the things that this system allows you to do is basically have um like an ast of mathematical expressions and apply transformations on these mathematical expressions um approaching a particular form a particular shape of that expression hence proving some equality some theorem right so essentially you have expression and then you want to prove that it's equal to another expression. And you have a bunch of other theorems that allow you to transform that expression into other expressions. And you can sort of like um, basically traverse the transformations and get to the, that specific point and just prove that one thing is equal to another. And that's the cool thing that I would like to focus on. Quite often I use Coq to just play with mathematical expressions, to just transform them and see if I can approach a particular shape. So I decided um, it would be actually pretty cool to just ditch all of this mathematical stuff of Coq and just implement the AST, like expression transformer, right? You know, so essentially you would be able to define an expression and then a bunch of rules that allow you to transform that expression and just apply the sequence of that expressions without 
uh, without the intention to prove anything, you know? So it's not going to be like a, like a really rigorous proof as the cock try and tries to achieve, right? It's going to be just uh, like mathematical doodling around, right? So I have an expression, I have a bunch of transformation rules. Let's just apply them and see where we can go without trying to prove anything, right? And this is what I wanted to implement. I wanted to implement a system that allows me to do that. So I'm going to demonstrate to you what I mean. Uh, so let's go. Doodling cox, yes, it's doodling cox. Uh, so let me go here and I'm going to create a folder called uh, knock, right? So the system is going to be called knock, which stands for not cock, right? So it's definitely not cock. Uh, how are you doing in Russia right now? Uh, I'm doing okay. I have a roof over my head, so that's fine. Don't really worry about me. Uh, my state is not really hunting me down because they don't speak English. <laughs> right. um, so, yeah. Why is studying playing with cock? Why not? Uh, by the way, thank you everyone who's subscribing, but just keep in mind that I'm not getting any money from subscriptions, so it's not really, um, you know, doesn't really make any sense, but I mean, uh, you can get emotes by, by subscribing. Mm. So anyway, um, let's actually take a look at some stuff. So I'm going to create doodle.txt. Uh, uh, let's, let's try to take something simple. Uh, for example, the definition of derivative, right? Uh, by the way, do, uh, do I keep track of my description? Uh, description MD. Uh, okay, so references. I need to keep track of references just in case I will upload this stuff to uh, to YouTube. So this is going to be the cock. Uh, derivative. So I think derivative is actually the simple uh, thing that is easy to demonstrate uh, in terms of transformations. So the definition of derivative is actually pretty simple. So you have a function, right? And uh, essentially you have infinitely small value h, right? So basically you take f of a, a is a variable, right? So plus this infinitely small thing minus f of a and you divide by that infinitely small thing, which is approaching zero. Right, and that's the definition of derivative. And using that definition of derivative, you can uh, derive uh, different formulas for different uh, derivatives of different functions. So let's actually take a look at some of those things. Um, derivative. Uh, and I'm going to put it in here. So, so let's say that derivative of function f is equal to f. Uh, let's do it like this, uh, x plus h, uh, what was that, minus uh, f of x, and all of that is divided by h, right, and then we're gonna uh, send h to zero, so we're gonna make h approach zero, so we're gonna define a limit, uh, h um, approaching zero, right, something like this, so there we go, we have uh, definition of derivative. Derivative of f is basically this uh, sort of like uh, expression. And let's define a simple function. Let's define something like uh, a square function, right? Square of x and it's equal to x to like squared. So, and now you want to know uh, what's going to be derivative of square? We really know that derivative of square is 2 multiplied by x, but we want to kind of like not really prove that but transform uh, this expression, this expression to actually get to final answer, right? Um, so why don't you get money from subs? Twitch doesn't send anything to Russian streamers as far as you know, but I don't know. Mm -mm. Mm. So... Okay, and how you can do that? You can basically uh, essentially take um, this sort of pattern and replace it, right? As you can see, derivative of f is equal to this expression. So that means derivative of square is equal to this expression where I replace f with square. There we go. 
So this is sort of like the first transformation I've made. Uh, right, so this was the first transformation. Uh, the next thing I can transform in here, I can probably substitute uh, the square application, right? Square is equal to x to the power of two, right? And uh, let's actually go ahead and do that. So I can essentially just uh, replace it like so. Right, so this is gonna be just uh, like this and this thing becomes like this. Okay, cool. Uh, so what else can we do? So we can probably uh, uh, basically simplify or I don't know how do you call this in English, right? So you can basically open this parenthesis. In Russian, we call it opening this parenthesis, but I don't know how it's called in English. So I really expand. Okay, so thank you. Thank you so much. Expand, right? But to expand this thing, we need to have some sort of a like definition, some sort of a rule. Uh, right, so let's actually define one. Uh, and we're going to define it as an axiom. We're not going to try to prove anything. It's not a cock. That's kind of point, right? In cock, you're supposed to prove each individual little thing that you're putting there except axioms. In here, you don't really have to prove anything. You just like define a bunch of transformation rules and you transform in the expression just doodling around, right? So it's primarily for doodling, um, you know, mathematical ex uh, expressions and stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you everyone for, for the subscription. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And uh, let's define a simple rule. A plus B, right? A plus B squared is going to be equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And then we're going to say, okay, let's apply this rule to this expression, right? And there's only one sub-expression that fits that rule. So let's go ahead and just apply it uh, like so. So this one is going to be something like uh, x squared plus 2xh plus uh, h uh, squared. Right, there we go. So now uh, you have a bunch of things. You can already sort of simplify uh, these two expressions, right? Because x squared and minus x squared, they sort of simplify each other, but you cannot do that directly, right? You can define a rule, something like um, a minus a equals zero, right? But you can't apply it because there's no such expression in here. Right, so you will have to, we'll have to define this sort of like a, you know, uh, associativity, I think, right, so it's going to be uh, left associative, right, so all of the expressions are like associative like this. Uh, and uh, then you would need to uh, specify the rule that allows you to basically move uh, this expression close to here, and then uh, apply this rule and get zero and then you'll have something like zero plus a equal to a and you will get rid of zero and so on and so forth. So essentially uh, I want to have a system that allows me to define like a bunch of such rules and keep transforming the expression until I achieve something like 2x, right? So um, yeah, and that's quite often what I'm using cock for. Right, quite often I'm using coke as like uh, a basic transformer of the expressions, but with a lot of bureaucracy, if you know what I mean, right? If you ever used coke, you know what I'm talking about. There's a lot of like bureaucracy and like, you know, boilerplate just to, just to try things around because it's always trying to be like very strict, very formal, you have to prove everything. And uh, I want a more relaxed system where I can just transform things around. You, you see what I mean? Um, so, and that's what I want you to develop today, right? Does anyone have any questions about the, the thing? I don't know what's going to be the interface of that thing yet. Right, so I'm going to start with defining AST and a simple engine that allows me to do pattern matching and transformation. And then I'll see how we can build a user interface around that engine. So that's going to be the idea. <sighs> is this supposed to automatically for any function or is it uh, with manual uh, listens? I don't know what that means. So with the uh, in fact, when we're talking about limits at some point, it just means that you have to replace all of the occurrences of H with zero at some point, right? And we're going to define a rule saying something like a, b, 
Mm -mm. Um, so maybe I'm going to call it variable uh, value expression. And I'm going to say maybe there is going to be a special sort of macro that says that limit of this thing is basically replace uh, variable with value in that specific expression. So on the level of AST, on the level of symbolic math, limit is just a replacement of variable with a particular value. That's what it is on a level of just symbolic algebra. You know what I'm talking about? N not not mathematical level, but just on the level of manipulating symbols. And that's what we're doing here. We're just manipulating symbols. It's a symbolic algebra. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Does anyone have any other questions, maybe? Mm -mm -mm. Do, 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 do. There's a ton of boilerplate with cock in all aspects. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Uh, do, 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 do. Do you still get donations from Patreon? I have no place to withdraw them to, so... I'm pretty much getting no money from all of the activity on the internet, so, yeah. And I'm not the one who needs money right now. Just check the donate command, seriously. Mm. Mm. As a mathematician, it hurts to just replace the value. Well, I mean, it's you as a mathematician should know when to replace this value. You should know when to apply the, this specific rule, right? So, um, yeah, so you define a rule but you're not applying it right away. So the system will allow you to just pick a rule of the uh, transformation and just apply it uh, at a particular point if you need to, right? So, and what rules to apply at which point is up to you because you are the mathematician, you know better. The system is not trying to replace you or anything. It's just like, this is a place for you to doodle around with expressions, with symbols, of um you know of um, of algebra and stuff like that um right mm -hmm. so um all right so let's actually go ahead and implement that um what I'm thinking is that since my goal right now is to attract as many people as possible to my stream, um, I need to pick a language correspondingly. So, and everyone knows what language gets the most, uh, the most views. So guess the language that we're going to be using for implementing this system. Uh, as much as I hate it, right and i swear that i'm not going to program that language anymore but i think the code is actually worth it we're going to be using rust <laughs> we're going to be using the rust <laughs> yes uh we're going to be using that goddamn language um okay so i'm going to just change the title and i'm going to say not cock in Rust, right. So I'm gonna put that word in my title. There we go. So this is officially the Rust stream now. Uh, all right, I guess ready, I guess ready. So we're gonna be programming in Thrust. Uh, Main.rs, maybe I should call it actually knock.rs. Mm -mm. So, and uh, let's implement hello world, right? So it's gonna be print ln, if I remember correctly how to program in Rust. I don't quite remember, but uh, let me actually do Rust C, knock RS, and I'm gonna just run it right away. This is not really what I wanted to do. Thank you, Emacs, not cool. 
not really really cool okay so it says hello world so what we need to do in here we just need to define an ast right so we need to define an ast and in rust is actually pretty simple because it's uh, rust is heavily inspired by functional languages with their algebraic data types and stuff like that so uh let's go ahead and do that let's define an expression right let's define an expression an expression can be one of two things actually three things right so it could be a symbol right so a string and a symbol in our case is basically just a variable right so it's like uh something like x or h or like yeah and another thing is probably an operator right so it's going to be op uh, because i also want to have a binary operators but maybe right now i'm not going to be implementing that right so let's not uh, get uh, binary operators yet we can implement them later once we have the the full system mm, so uh Valigo, thank you so much for the sub i subbed for six months like three months ago hope you was able to get at least part of the stones before complete demonetization uh i guess it's not really that important but thank you for for subbing for such a long time so yeah anyway so and i think the second important uh node of ast is gonna be like this function application uh i want to call this function application basically like a name plus the argument i want to call it a functor right so it is called functor in prolog if you ever programmed in prolog you know what i'm talking about so here we're gonna have symbols like uh, atoms or variables and also functors right so that's gonna be uh the second thing that we're gonna have in here and the functor has a name right the name of this specific functor and uh the argument an argument is going to be vector of expressions right as you can see we have a self-referential uh type right and for now it's going to be sufficient right so we can add operators a little bit later i don't think they're important right now uh also uh, let's define a very simple i don't know rule and rule by the way a rule is going to be the equality right so here you will have a pattern and then on the left side and on the right side you're going to have the replacement what uh, replace this pattern with right because of that i think we're going to define some sort of a structure like a rule right and then here you have a head right so the the left side of the uh, of this equation is going to be the first expression and then you're going to have a body what to not body but body uh, what to replace it with right so this is going to be the rule uh so and i think both of these things have to derive debug right so as you can see this is going to be derived uh, i just realized that i didn't update my project command right so in the project command i have uh just like nothing so let me actually quickly update what i have in here this indie project uh or one sender and so I'm gonna just put this thing in here. Uh, thank you so much for all of the subscriptions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I don't get anything, but I really appreciate it nonetheless. At least you get something, right? If you subscribe, you get the emotes. Maybe that's worth it, so yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you everyone for, for the subscription, thank you. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna say in here, today we are implementing uh, knock. It's like cock uh but less mathy uh the github uh repo is coming soon i only started uh -huh. all right cool so let's go uh so here is the rule and uh let's actually define a very simple rule right a very simple substitution rule uh let's allow defining pairs right so let's have a pair uh, a and b and let's define the following pattern swap pair a b should be equal to pair b a right and once you apply this rule to any sort of like expression that has pair in the in the head of the 
uh, of the functor, it should actually swap the arguments, right? So how would we define such rule, uh, right? So we're gonna do swap uh, rule. Uh, here we're gonna have head, right? And then we're gonna have a body. So in the head, we're gonna have uh, essentially functor. So this thing is an expression. Can I just do something like use expr uh, like this? So it's gonna be fun. And in here we have to define swap, right? And then here we'll have to define uh, pair. Uh, and then we're gonna have a symbol a. Uh, and all that has to be a vector, by the way. So it has to be something like this. So, and symbol B. So I'm defining this AST directly because we don't have any way to parse that stuff from the string, but we're gonna implement that at some point. Uh, and in here, I'm gonna have like this sort of vector, right? So let me see if this entire thing compiles. Uh, it does not compile, but let's see why. So this is because you have to do it like this, I think, right? So, and this thing is supposed to be to string. Okay, so I have to convert it to string. Mm, and I have to do that for all of them. So it's gonna be to string, uh, and in here also to string, uh, to string. Okay, so is it gonna work? It seems to be working. Okay, so, and it uh, panics at 20, at around 20, because this is uh, where we define the body. And in here, I'm gonna just do the following thing. So I'm gonna swap around uh, B and A, right? So we, we just like manually defined two ASTs, and we can try to basically print this rule, right? So we have a debug in here, and let's just do swap. Uh, all right, and essentially here's the rule, right? And I want to have um, a simple function, something like uh, apply, like a rule, apply uh, all. And since I'm programming in Rust, I think I can just make it a method of rule, right? So I can do something like this, apply all. And in here, we're gonna accept the immutable self, the rule itself, and the expression that we wanna transform, right? So it's gonna be expression, and it's gonna return a new expression, um, right? So, and that's pretty much it, right? You have a rule, which is basically a head and body. Both of them are expressions. And you have a function that accepts another expression, matches the head, right? It matches the head, it literally does pattern matching and replaces with the body replacing the corresponding variables producing the new expression. That's basically the entire interface of this engine, right? So we're gonna have a very simple engine. It allows you to define rules, head and body, and uh, yeah, you just apply them. I, I still don't know what's gonna be the interface for this system. Maybe it's gonna be like CLI, uh, some sort of a repo where you can define rules and then start transforming the expression and in interactive way. I don't know yet, I'm developing the engine and that's basically the outline of the engine. It should be as simple as that. Does that make sense? Mm -mm -mm. I'm just looking at the chat, hoping to see any questions. <clears throat> hello, hello everyone. All right, so let's actually print uh, this thing. So we already printed it. Okay, so it looks like this. Um, what I'm thinking is that we need a better way of printing this entire stuff. So I, I'm thinking to implement the display interface for, uh, for these types. So let's quickly do that. <clears throat> so, so what do we have in here? Uh, display. So I need a display interface. Uh, I'm sorry, trait. So interfaces in Rust are called traits. So in this thing, um, basically requires you to implement FMT method, right? FMT method, and it accepts a formatter. And formatter, what does it implement? Does it implement anything useful? It implements write, so I can basically use write ln and just write macros to work with this thing. Yeah, I think I should be able to do that. So let's quickly do that. So I'm gonna implement display 
for expression and let's see how it is going to complain so we don't have a display uh, let's do std fmt i think it's located in fmt if i'm not mistaken right i think it is so it's a display fmt all right so and i'm not gonna import everything maybe i'm gonna do maybe i'm gonna not import everything but i'm gonna just do it like that uh, all right, so and what it wants, it wants me to implement this specific thing in here, right? So that's what it wants me to implement. Uh, so here is the format. I don't think I need the lifetime in here. I think this uh, is also located in FMT. And uh, let's actually try to compile this entire thing like that. It seems to be... All right, so it seems to be working. Okay, so how are we going to be doing all of that? So expression can be uh, one of two things. It can be a symbol, right? So it's a symbol name. Uh -huh. So I'm going to put to do in here. And uh, we're going to have a function and arguments. And it's also to do. So yes, yes, yes. It's still a symbol. Oh, OK. So it has to be something like expert like so. <clears throat> Uh, no way it's turning after the last stream. Yeah, the Twitch is still not blocked in Russia for whatever reason. Uh, maybe soon it's going to be blocked, but uh, until it's blocked, I'm going to keep streaming and just doing my thing. <clears throat> you say you don't like this language. When did I say that I don't like this language? I don't remember saying that. I actually like Rust. Just because I constantly criticize this language doesn't mean that I don't like it. I think it's a very interesting language. Uh, with a pretty annoying community. Mm -hmm. The community of this language is the things that ruins that language, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Uh, now, so I think I'm going to also implement the display for the rule. Right, so let's implement FMT display for rule. Right, and we're gonna have a similar thing in here. Um, so, mm -mm -mm -mm. so it's gonna be to do. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so it seems to be compiling. Uh, how are we gonna be implementing all of that? So I'm gonna do write f, and I'm gonna say just print this thing. So we're gonna render symbols as just their names, right? So we're not gonna do anything special in here. Uh, now, the next thing. Mm -hmm. So the functions are going to be slightly different, right? So we're going to have uh, the name of the function, open parent, right? So then I'm going to do name. Uh, and then I have to iterate through the arguments. For arg in args, right, I'll have to do, I'll just have to write uh this thing like that right i'll have to write this thing like that and this is going to be arg but i also need to separate the arguments with commas right so and if there's no arguments i should not provide any commas so i think the easiest thing for me to do is to enumerate uh this entire thing and just have the index and if the index is greater than zero just to write uh something like this right just to write something like this mm, i think write returns the the result right it must return the result so because of that it makes sense to put question marks in here i, I mean the compiler is going to tell me anyway doesn't really matter and after that i'm just going to do write f and i'm going to close the parentheses uh all right so what do we have in here enumerate uh okay so i have to iterate this thing first uh, iterate this thing. Oh, and then here I don't really have to do anything. Okay, perfect. Uh, so this is just the expression, but then uh, we need to do that thing for the rule as well, right? So here we're going to do write f, uh, and this is going to be that and that self head self body, right? So, and that should be sufficient enough. And there we go. We just rendered this rule, right? So as I already said, we defined the AST of a simple rule, right? So a swap of a pair AB is equal to pair BA, 
Right, so we defined manually this AST and we defined like a simple formatter for this entire thing. And now when we print it, it just looks like you would write it yourself with the syntax of this uh, NOC language, right? So at some point we also implement the parser, right? So you can render this expression and then we'll be able to take this string and parse it into AST and then perform the transformations and stuff like that. But we're gonna implement that a little bit later, maybe on the next stream, right? So, but not right now. <clears throat> but not right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, what do we need to do in here? What do we need to do in here? We need to be able to sort of like a pattern match a specific expression, if you know what I mean. Right. So, we need to be able to do that. All right. Essentially, I want to be able to just take this expression right just this expression somehow right in the form of ast maybe then i want to be able to take another expression like pair and here we can have something like f of c and g of d right and then i want to pattern match it right so i want to say that this is a pattern and this is the expression and pattern matching and as a result of pattern matching these two expressions, I want to end up with the answer, yes, this expression has the same shape as this one, or no, it doesn't have the same uh, shape. And another thing I want to get out of that, if the answer is yes, if the expression really does have uh, the shape as the pattern, I want to get the hash map of the corresponding variables, right? I wanna get a hash map where uh, I have a key A and a value F of C and another key B with the value uh, G of D. You see what I mean here? So I wanna get a list of bindings, right? So here I have a pattern, right? I have a pattern and I have a value that I'm pattern matching, right? And if they do match, on top of uh, having the answer, yes, they do match, I wanna have a bindings that correspond to the, to the variables that we sort of like extracted in here. So then I can take these bindings and go to the body of the rule and replace the corresponding variables within that body. You see what I mean? So that's what I wanna be able to do. Does it make sense? <clears throat> Does this explanation make sense? All right. So, and let's just go ahead and like define function that does that, right? So let's define a function pattern uh, match, right? So here we're gonna accept a pattern, which is an expression, and then the value that we're trying to uh, pattern match, and it's also gonna be expression, and the result is obviously gonna be an option, right? So the answer is gonna be yes or no, the pattern matches the value or no it doesn't match the value and if it does match it if it does match it uh, we should have some sort of a hash map which maps a string the name of a particular symbol to the sub expression right so the result is going to be like pretty verbose right it's option of hash map uh, from string to an expression and this is essentially binding. We can even define something like uh, bindings, right? Which is a hash map from a string to an expression, just to make it a little bit more readable. And this is basically bindings, and there we go. So we're gonna have something like this. <clears throat> so, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so let me see. Uh, power matching, so this thing, what is it complaining about? I'm not really sure. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Hmm. Expected one of this thing. I forgot the semicolon, I see. <laughs> All right. So we don't have a hash map and I think we just need to do a CD collection. I don't remember where it is located to be fair. I think it's located in collections, collections hash map. Mm, so collection C, uh, hash map, there we go, mm, collection C, and there we go, there we go. It would be nice 
to have uh, like these two patterns. So let me actually define something like this. So we're gonna have a pattern and I'm just gonna take a swap rule and like take a head out of it because this is literally what I have as a pattern. And I need to define a value, right? I need to define a value. And to define a value, I'll probably have to go here, right? So in here we're gonna have uh, we'll have to replace these things with like sub expressions f of c and g of d. So this one is going to be something like this. And then, uh, right, so it's going to be a vector. Uh, and it's going to be a vector like so. Uh, not quite sure. I think, yeah, I think it has to be like that. And then I can define a function functor uh, f to string. Mm, to string and there we go and then fun g fun g huh. uh -huh, there we go i hope i didn't screw that up right i really hope so uh all right so let me try to compile this into i think and of course i screwed that up a little bit but i just forgot the semicolon um so we have that we have that do we have any specific errors in here uh so value partially moved in here uh okay so maybe i can clone this entire thing can i clone it i, I didn't think so i think it has to be uh clonable right so you have to define clone in here otherwise you won't be able to do that uh okay so let's actually print those things Right, I want to say that I have a pattern, so pattern is going to be like this. So this is the pattern and this is the value, right? So this is going to be like that. Uh -huh. Let's take a look at them. There we go. So our pattern is that and our value is that. So let's go ahead and just like do the following thing. Right, I'm going to do pattern match, pattern value. There we go. So pattern match, pattern value, and uh, okay, so that's pretty cool, and we already failed in here, right? So we need to implement this entire thing. <sighs> oh boy, so what I'm thinking, I actually wrong, wrong mug. We need to define a hash map into which we're going to be um, you know, actively collecting all of the, uh, all of the bindings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking is that um, we need to match pattern and value. If the pattern is a variable, right, if the pattern is a variable, we can uh, say for sure that these two things match perfectly, right? So let me actually show you. So I'm going to do match pattern value. Right. And if the left one is a symbol, right, so with a particular name, it doesn't really matter what is the right one, right, what is the right one, because you essentially just create a binding that takes the value and assigns it to that specific name, right. So that's essentially what we're going to have in here. So this one is pretty straightforward. If this thing is a functor, right, so it has a particular name and it has a specific arguments, the right value has to be the same, uh, the same functor with the same name and the same amount of arguments. And then you would have to pattern match each individual argument separately, right? You'll have to pattern match it separately and uh, then uh, you would collect all of the bindings. Collecting the bindings is actually kind of pain in the ass, right? Because what you essentially need to do, you need to traverse the, the tree. You need to traverse the tree. So I think the easiest thing to do in here is to actually, um, you know, draw, right? To explain what I mean in here, I need to draw. So where is my talent? Still dead. All right. Uh, okay. Pattern matching is actually very interesting. Uh, very interesting process. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so it's gonna be my paint. I don't really have any place for for the tablet, unfortunately. Emacs looks kind of sick. I, I don't know. It looks all right. He has legs. Of course I do. Um, okay, so imagine that we have uh, something like F, right? So this is F. So this is going to be pattern, right? So this is going to be pattern. And F has like two children, right? So the variable A and the variable B, right? So this is our pattern, right? And the value is going to be, right? Value is going to be F and some stuff in the subtrees, right? So it actually goes even further. So what we have to do, we essentially need to traverse two trees simultaneously. You know how in the coding interviews they ask you to traverse a tree, uh, just a single tree. But here we have to traverse two trees simultaneously in parallel. The tree of the pattern and the tree of the value of the value. <laughs> So I haven't practiced my English for quite some time, so I'm really sorry if I'm speaking with an uh, extra thick accent. Extra thick accent. <laughs> extra thick. The value. Okay. So, and, right. Uh, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to ensure that both of the trees sort of start uh, with a functor with the same name. And then we're going to recursively try to pattern match left subtree of pattern with the left subtree of the value, right? And the right subtree of the pattern with the right subtree of the value, right? And as we do that, as soon as we hit just a single symbol in the pattern, we just associate that symbol with that subtree and that symbol with that subtree, and we have to add all of that to the bindings hash table, right? So, and the question is, how can we easily do that? So one of the way to do that is to basically return, if you encounter a symbol, return a hash table with a single binding, and when you encounter a function, you recursively call pattern match and you just merge the hash tables. This is essentially like a very pure functional way of doing things, right? So you generate shit ton of hash, uh, hash maps and then you just, as you unwind the recursion, you merge them together into a single hash map. But it's really not efficient in my opinion, right? So because you just generate shit ton of intermediate small uh, objects, and then you have to merge them and it's just like too slow. It would be better to just create a single hash map and just carry it around as you traverse both of the trees. And as soon as you hit the termination point, essentially symbol, which you need to associate with the subtree, you just add that to that global hash map and just like bail out. So that would be the easiest thing to implement. Uh, and the most efficient one is just like a more natural one. Uh, instead of doing the pure functional thing. So I think I'm gonna go with that one, but that requires like two functions. So the first function is gonna just initiate the hash table and the second function is gonna just like traverse this thing. So in the pattern match uh, here, we'll have to do something like bindings, right? So this is gonna be hash map new, right? And then, um, we need a second function, right? So the pattern match. Uh, I don't know how to call it. Like it's an actual implementation, right? But it's supposed to be like kind of hidden from from everything, right? I didn't really know how to how to properly implement that, but whatever. So here we're gonna have a pattern, right? So expression value expression, and this thing is also going to accept the mutable bindings, right? So it's going to be bindings, but it's going to be mutable reference to the bindings. And it's going to return a boolean indicating whether it succeeded or not, right? So this is going to be to do. And in here, essentially what we're going to do, I think I'm going to just move it in here. We're going to do pattern match 
implementation, we're gonna provide the pattern, we're gonna provide the value, we're gonna provide the bindings, basically collecting all of the bindings, and of course we have to make them mutable. Uh, right, and if this thing succeeded, right, if this thing succeeded, we're gonna simply Im uh, return some bindings. Uh, otherwise, we're gonna return none, right? So there we go. Thank you, thank you for all the subscriptions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm not getting anything, so but I really appreciate that nonetheless. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You can actually define private functions inside of the functions. Aren't you supposed to do them through the lambdas or through the closures in Rust? I know, like, I programmed in too many functional languages. I know that in some languages you can do that, but I thought that in Rust you have to do that through the closure. Uh, just something like let um, pattern match, right? Pattern match impl. Right, so and then you have to just accept it like that. You know how you do that in C++, right? In C++, you cannot define nested functions, but you can define them if you just assign them like as a lambda to a variable. I thought that in Rust it is like that. So, but can you just like do it like this? Can I straight up like put one thing inside of another thing and will that work? Um, we're about to find out actually, maybe it will, I don't know. So let me see. Uh, okay, so we have a pattern match in here. I'm not quite sure. Uh, so yeah, okay, so it expects something like this. Let's do to do. Uh, and I just want to see if it's gonna work. So name, uh, name one, name two, right? So it's gonna be name one, name two. This one is uh, args. If I is bound more than once. Okay, so it's gonna be one and two. And what else do we have in here? Cannot find tuple struct sim. Uh, okay, so can I just do like use expert? Uh, all right, looks like you can actually do that. Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is the pattern. And what does it say? You cannot find value pattern in this specific scope. And this is because it's called pattern, not pattern. Uh, right, okay, thank you. All right, so Rust is one of those languages that actually allow you to do that. So the, the problem with programming in too many languages is, is that you never remember, never remember uh, what is supported in which language, right? So you sort of basically program in like a common denominator between all the languages you programmed in. Um, so, yeah. <clears throat> and yeah, this is a very useful function, a uh, feature, right? So I think languages should support uh, defining functions within other functions because it's just like allows you to organize code better. Mm -hmm. hmm. And by the way, can it actually enclose the bindings? So can I just do something like this without passing the bindings all the time? Right, because this is something that you can do in OCaml and OCaml actually had a very huge influence on Rust. Um, and the first implementation of Rust was in OCaml. So this is like a very common thing to do in OCaml. So does it capture stuff? Um, Okay, so we have a pattern that is not covered, uh, so we can actually do it like that. All right, so this is going to be to do. Mm -hmm. Apparently, it can it can capture. Well, it, it compiled, but we never actually try to access bind. So let's actually try to access it. So I'm going to do bind insert. Uh, no, 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 we, we haven't tried to access bindings yet, so we don't really know if it supports or not. So it's going to be name, and I don't really remember. So hash map, is, is that insert or is that add insert? Uh, it is insert, okay. So insert name and value. So that should answer our question. Okay, oh yeah, it, it cannot capture that. Uh, all right, so let's actually pass it around. Um, bindings, uh, mute, uh, bindings. Okay, so then in here we'll have to pass bindings like so. And since you can't really capture that, it makes sense to maybe put it somewhere here so it doesn't like stay in our way. Uh, even though it probably doesn't matter, but yeah, whatever. So here we uh, just add bindings and we can immediately return true, right? Indicating that uh, we successfully did this thing. And uh, that's basically it. Okay, cool. So what we need to do in here. 
When we encounter two functions, what we have to do is just check if name one equal name two. So this is like very important um, uh, condition, right? So if they're equal and the amount of arguments is the same as the second amount of arguments, right? Uh, then we can work with that. Otherwise, so we can straight up return false without even worrying about that. So this is just straight up false. Um, okay, so what do we have in here? So where are the problems? So value. Mm -mm -mm. So it wants to clone it. Let's actually clone it. Why not? Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. Move occurs. Huh. Since, okay, since we're cloning stuff around, maybe it makes sense to actually pa pass those things by reference, uh, right? So, uh, in num expression, but found, and in here, we also have to accept, accept them by reference. And because of that, I think it could screw up things a little bit. Uh, try convert so here maybe I'm gonna just like move it like that okay so and we're gonna pass it like this uh, so so it's constantly complaining about this kind of stuff um, maybe I can clone this string as well and it seems to be working okay so cool uh, this seems to be working. The next thing I need to do, I need to start iterating through the pairs of the arguments, right? So the easiest thing for me to do that is to probably just um, have an index, right? So for i in uh, 0 to arg1, uh, args1 len, right, we're going to do the following thing where we do would parent match, uh, parent match mm, implementation, uh, args1, uh, maybe it will be better to like zip them around, but uh, I think it's fine. Uh, args, uh, args to i, uh, and we're gonna pass bindings. And if for whatever reason this is not going to return true, we're gonna instantly like break out and return false. But if everything went fine, we're gonna return true. Right, there we go. So, okay. Uh, here it has to be a reference. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's cool. Uh huh. I think it worked. Look at that. So, this is the pattern swap pair AB, and this is the value swap pair C and D. And what look what happened? A here in the hash map got associated with f of c, right? So a is associated with f of c and b got associated with g of d. So we, we actually managed to perform pattern matching. So this is the pattern matching and we got a hash map that associated these variables with these sub expressions. So yeah, we've got this kind of thing. Uh, I'm not really sure. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So I suppose in this particular case, if you hit this condition, you can straight up return false, right? Because you didn't match anything. So I suppose that's fine. Uh, anything, Jones? Thank you, Jones. Thank you so much for twenty-seven uh, radius for twenty-seven opened tabs. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. So yeah. So we can match things around. That's pretty cool. I wonder how can you like iterate? Uh, is there any way for me to iterate the hash map? Uh, you can iterate key and value, right? So because that's what I wanted to do. Mm, so I'm gonna pattern match. Mm. Two, 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 two. So if let some bindings pattern match, what we're gonna do is for uh, key value in bindings eater. Uh, we're gonna just do print, uh, right, key value. Uh, and here, otherwise, we're gonna have something like print len no match. Right, so let's take a look at this stuff. Uh, okay, so that looks a little bit better. Um, we can even say something like um, match. 
Yeah, it's something. Didn't like something. Okay. Uh huh. So this is that, and this is the match. If I change something, maybe in a pattern, or maybe in um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I think in a pattern, I can replace the head with the body, so it's gonna be a completely different expression, and it should say no match. Okay, so if pattern is pair B A, and the value is that, they didn't match, right? So we we try to match the top functors and they have different names and there's no matching here so we can quite easily just determine whether uh, a particular power matches a value and if it matches we can know the corresponding uh, variables which is pretty cool look at that mm. So what if the pattern is something like xx? This is actually a good question. I think we need to uh, take that into account. So if we, oh yeah, that's actually pretty cool. If we encounter a symbol and it already exists in a hash map, we have to make sure that the value behind that symbol is equal to whatever we have there. That's a good point. Thank you, Demke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, this is something that we have to actually take into account. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're gonna have fun uh, foo to string uh, vec, and it's gonna be a symbol uh, x, right? So x to string uh, symbol x to string. There we go. So let's first try to map that. So this has to be a function. And, okay, so this is that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And if I try to do something like this, right, foo, uh, and in here, I'm gonna say foo A and B, and this thing will power match. Yeah, yeah, okay, there we go. So this is incorrect, this is completely incorrect. So to fix that, what we need to do, uh, when we encounter a symbol, before just blindly inserting that, we need to check, does that symbol already exist in bindings? And if it does, it has to be equal to the value, and if it's not equal to the value, it's insta-false, they do not match. Uh, okay, so can I get some stuff? So I can get by a key and it returns me something. Okay, that's cool. So if let, uh, Andrushka, thank you so much for, for the subs. Uh, I'm really, I really apologize if I didn't mention like everyone who subscribed. Uh, I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> so, but it's not really convenient for me to mention everyone, but I really, really appreciate that. Uh, but at the same time, I'm not getting anything from that. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, why do we have to call to string on a string? Because the string literal doesn't have the type string. It has the type of uh, string slice, right? And to convert the string slice to a string, you have to call to string. I think, at least the last time I checked Rust. Rust is constantly changing, maybe in nightly you can have like a special syntax to not do that, but I don't know. I don't think it matters that much because this is not gonna be the official way of defining the AST anyway. Right, so we're gonna have a parser that accepts the string, right, and it will parse the string and construct the AST for you, but we're gonna implement that a little bit later. Okay, so what I want to do in here, I want to do if let uh, some um, value, maybe a bound value, right, and here we're going to have bindings, uh, get name, right. So we have two situations, right, we have two situations. Uh, when we found that thing and we, when we didn't find that thing. When we didn't find this binding, this is the first time we encountered that binding, we just insert that binding there and uh, just return the true. If we already saw that binding, there are two uh, things, right? So it is, it has to be equal to the bound value. If it is equal to the bound value, we can just return the true. If it's not equal to the bound value, we can just return the false. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, you you can just you can just do it like that, right? So you, you don't really have to have this if condition. Um, so, but they have to be comparable, right? So they have to be comparable. So I don't think it's gonna compile right away. 
uh, so we have to derive something like um, hmm. I wonder if I have to binary operation cannot be applied to expert even if I derive partial equality right will it work it did work when I derived partial. okay there we go so as you can see there is no match between these two things but if I change one of these values to a they do match look at that look at that so now we can even have repeating variables right and they must be equal to the same thing right if they're not equal to the same thing uh it's not going to be a match right so that's pretty cool that is very very cool uh so okay i think we successfully implemented power matching uh i think we did so and another step in implementing the rule substitution is going to be taking the bindings and replacing all of the occurrences of the variables within a particular expression with the corresponding values. If that makes any sense. Uh, anyway, so what we can do, let me see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So let's go ahead and start implementing the main function in here, like a rule apply all, right? So basically we have a rule, uh, head and body, and we have an expression and we're just trying to, you know, uh, apply the rule to all of the sub-expressions, right? <sighs> the idea is gonna be like this. So if we take a look at our rule, mm-hmm. So I'm just thinking what's going to be the best way to explain what I'm trying to implement. So I think I can just remove this entire stuff and let's just focus on the swap rule that we have in here. Right, just a simple swap rule. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So here is a simple swap rule. And I need an expression uh, that I can apply this rule to. Right. So let's actually do something like this, like a rule. This is the rule that we're working with. This is the rule we're working with. And let's define a simple expression, right? So that simple expression is going to be uh, just a swap, but instead of these two things, uh, we're going to have maybe more sophisticated expressions within, right? Instead of A and B, we're gonna have like a F of A and F of B. Uh, so, hey, it's starting. I have a job interview as an embedded dev in three weeks. Uh, I never worked with embedded commercially, so I don't really know. What's the best way to prepare myself? I had C in school for six months and the job requirement is C++. Hmm. So people already use C++ in embedded? I didn't know that. Is programming microcontrollers and firmware, what's the best way to learn C++? I don't really know. The best way to learn anything is like in programming in general is just like do that for an extended period of time. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you can try to read the Strauss Troop books. And also, I, I don't really know. So the way I learn things, I just like take the language and I just implement something in that language. Uh, and that works for me. I don't know if it's going to work for you. Right. So different people learn things differently. So usually how I learn, I just like take a reference manu manual for a particular language and just a simple project and just implement it. So that's how I did that. Hmm. All right. So here we can have something like fun f to string. So it's going to be back. Uh -huh. So fun and good luck with your interview, by the way. All right. Uh, back. Uh -huh. So this is going to be like that. And all right. Like that, then that, 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 that. <laughs> Look at this. Look at this trailing parentheses and brackets. My God. Speaking of Lisp, by the way, 
Uh, so here is the expression, and there we go. Cool. All right. So I have the following rule, right? I have the following rule: swap of pair of A and B is equal to pair B A. I want to apply that rule to this expression where I have swap pair f of a and g of b. But here's the thing, apply all, right, so I'm going to be using the, um, you know, swap apply all like this, right. So I'm just taking the rule and I'm applying this thing, uh, right, and here I can do something like Mm, transformed uh, uh, I don't know, expression prime right to indicate that it was transformed um, it's not gonna work yet because this thing is not implemented but the idea is the following uh, this apply all should actually apply the transformation for all of the sub expression right so uh, meaning that it's not only gonna be applied if it's at the top but also if it's inside, for instance, another functor, right? So fun foo to string uh, to string, and then it's gonna be vec. Uh, I can't see shit in this means to be fair, right? And mm -hmm. so I probably have to do that like this, right? Uh, cool. So I have this expression. And when I apply this rule to this expression, it has to actually go inside of this functor and transform this sub-expression. So it basically has to traverse everything, right? Traverse everything. And as soon as it hits the sub-expression that perfectly matches the head of the rule, it has to perform the substitution. You see what I mean? So especially if I have like two of them, right? I mean, I may actually have two of them. Let me let me actually show you. So maybe I'm gonna have like two swaps in here. So here is the first swap, and then I'm gonna have the second swap. Who said I can do that? Mm. And uh, so something went horribly wrong. I don't know what exactly. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh boy, Emacs. Uh, okay, so let me try to do that one more time. One more time. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be five. Uh -huh. And I just want to see if it's going to do the trick. Okay, so as you can see here, I have first swap and the second swap. When I do apply all, it should go into all of these sub-expressions and transform them all. Right, so what it, what it, that's what it has to do. So here maybe we're gonna have not only f and, and g, but maybe um, q and z. Here we have we have c and d. Right, Lori Master, thank you, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, okay, cool. So apply all of the rules has to like go deep and apply the rule to everything. Maybe we're going to have different strategies of apply, uh, applying the rules, right? Maybe we're going to uh, have something like apply only if it's it matches at the top or apply the first when you traverse leftmost or apply the first to rightmost, right? We're going to have like different strategies and we're going to allow you to apply them uh, however you want. Maybe you also can uh, apply them by an index, right? So essentially, as you traverse like uh, leftmost, you encounter matches. Like here is the first match, here is the second match, here is the third match, and maybe we allow will allow the user to tell. Okay, replace only nth match within the expression. You will be able to actually say, okay, so like the first match or the second match and so on and so forth, or all of the matches. And this is something that is very difficult to achieve in Coq, right? So because you have the current expression as you prove the theorem and you have another theorem that you want to apply to transform the current expression. And it's really difficult to make the Coq to sort of transform that specific sub-expression somewhere there. You have to like constantly, I don't know, like do weird tricks and whatnot. And maybe I just don't know how to do that, but this is something that I always struggle uh, like with in Coq. Um, to, 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 to. BFS or DFS? Since I'm going to be implementing then that recursively, it's going to be naturally DFS. But I don't think it matters that much, to be fair. Mm. 
Um, yeah. Maybe it's going to be like a parameter, right? So maybe the user will choose how to traverse the uh, the AST, like BFS or DFS, like leftmost, rightmost, and whatnot. For now, we're going to just implement the simple thing that works, and then we can improve that. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and just like implement this thing, I suppose. There's nothing much left to do. So here's the expression. All right. And the first thing we can try to do, we can try to pattern match, uh, pattern match the um, uh, hat of the rule with the expression, right? Uh, and you have two outcomes, whether it matches or doesn't match. If it does match, right, so uh, some bindings, right, we get bindings. Otherwise, we get nothing. Um, right. In case it matches, what we have to do, we have to take the bindings, we have to take the expression, we have to traverse that expression, and every time we encounter a symbol within that expression that exists in bindings, we have to replace that symbol with the value in these specific bindings. You, you see what I mean? Right. So we need some sort of a function, uh, substitute bindings that accepts the bindings uh, right so it's going to be bindings and it accepts the expression right so it accepts the expression and it, I suppose it should return a new expression uh, which basically has all of these things substituted right so it's going to be something like this uh, right so substitute bindings we're going to provide the bindings like so and the expression Right. And by the way, so maybe here I actually want to accept it like this. And uh, I guess that's it. Right. So if it matches, we just substitute. If it doesn't match, we have to go uh, continue traversing the specific expression. Right. So we need to take the expression, expression match it. Right. And if the expression equal to what? is equal to a symbol. There's nothing much to do in case of a symbol. So we just return, uh, we just return that expression, right? So there's nothing much to do. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, maybe we should consume it or maybe we should not consume it. Um, it doesn't really matter. I, th I think I can optimize that a little bit later. Uh, so how it's certain how it is going on your site? Uh, it's getting more and more depressing and more and more difficult. So yeah. But hopefully that just means that the regime is falling apart. Hopefully. Mm, so I can't stay unfortunately, but I just want to wish you well going forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, no matter what else is going on, you're the reason I'm daily Emacs user. <laughs> okay, really glad to hear that. But uh, I feel like when people start using Emacs because of me, I feel like I failed my job. I really feel like I failed my job because for the entirety of my streaming career, career I always trying to convince people that editor does not matter. It just doesn't matter. It's just a program that allows you to create text files. All right. So, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you enjoy an Emacs, right? There's nothing wrong with enjoying Emacs. It's just like, it makes me a little bit sad because it doesn't really matter. It's just an editor. It's a simple editor. Uh, anyways, so if we have a symbol, we just like return that symbol. And if we have a functor, right? So if we have a functor and this is a name, uh, what we have to do is essentially iterate through the arguments, right? And construct a completely new functor, right? So we're going to have something like mute uh, new arcs, right? So this is going to be new arcs. Right, and in here, I'm going to be iterating the arguments, right, args, and new args is just like push, uh, um, maybe self apply all, uh, self apply all arg, right, so that's what we're doing here, and here we construct the new args, and then we can just take that, there we go, so 
That's basically it. I hope. Um, actually, I have to do new arcs. Right. Alright, so this one is supposed to be something like this. Right. And what do we have in here? Symbol. Um, yeah. So use expert like this. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. So we need to pattern match this entire thing. So I'll have to do it like that. And in here we accept it like that. And uh, okay, so it still doesn't really work because why? Because we haven't implemented the substitute bindings. Okay, so in here we just have to iterate through all of the expressions. And if we encounter um, a particular binding, we have to replace it. That's what we have to do. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, this seems to be like the last thing that we need to implement in here, right? So this is going to be an expression and uh, we're going to have a symbol and a name. Uh, and then we're going to do bindings, get name. Thank you. Thank you everyone for subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If uh, let uh, some value, right? So if value does exist, Right, if value does exist, what we have to return in here is um, just a clone of that value, right? Just a clone of that value. Otherwise, we should return the expression, but cloned. All right, and if we have a function, right? Hmm, by the way, this one is really interesting. This one is really, really interesting. Um... What about nested patterns uh, like this one? This is actually a good question. Uh, two, 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 two. Um, this could be resolved by the idea of matching a specific uh, index, right? So essentially you can index these uh, patterns, right? So essentially this could be the first match, right? And then this could be the second match. We can in the future implement the, uh, you know, capability to say, okay, uh, substitute only the, like, once, well, not once, but first match, right? So if we're going to index them uh, from zero, so the top one is going to be the zeroth match, right? Uh, then the inner one is going to be the first match, right? And we're going to have a function that just lets you, you know, say and substitute that specific thing inside. Uh, but uh, we're not going to implement it right now because we, you know, haven't finished the essential part. But it could be resolved like this, right? So there's a lot of things you can do about that. Mm -mm. Okay, so here is the interesting thing about the functor. We want to be able to substitute the names of the functors as well. Right, because that's literally what we did in that dual thing, right? So as you can see, we had a derivative square. And the definition of the derivative is basically taking the f and replacing the head of the functor. So if the name of the functor exists in the bindings, we have to replace that name. But for the functors, we can only replace it if it's a symbol. So we also have to check if the binding that we're trying to replace is a symbol or not. But maybe we should allow um, things to be not only symbols. So this kind of naturally introduces lambda functions, right? You see what I mean? So maybe in the future we would be able to do things like derivative, but instead of like square, we would say, you know, x, x squared, right? And then uh, within that thing, you would replace this entire stuff with this lambda, right? So we can replace f with that, and it's going to look like this, and you can continue substitutions and stuff like that. So, so it kind of naturally introduces lambda functions, if you know what I mean. Right, and then you can continue like substituting, so and the lambda functions naturally become like inline substitutions or whatnot. So, but we're not going to do that right now, so it just like gives me ideas on, on how to proceed. Interesting. It's kind of interesting when you start to get into these like symbolic algebra, the lambda functions that like naturally appear. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting, don't you think? Mm, I think it, it is kind of interesting. Okay, so this is the name, this is the arguments, and the first thing we want to check in here is that 
uh, do we have the name and the bindings, right? So bindings get name. Uh, if let some um, some value in here. Okay. So and what we want to do in here is to check if the value is um, a symbol, right? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Interestingly, interestingly, maybe we can do it like this. So it's going to be match that, and you have several situations. Some uh, symbol new name, right? So this is some symbol new name. Uh, and you can just return that new name, then you have none, and in that case you just use the old name, right? Just use the old name. And then if it's some something else, you probably need to throw some sort of an error, right? For now, um, so it would be nice to maybe return a result and properly handle all of that, but for now I think I'm gonna just panic. So I'm gonna say panic and say that Mm -mm. Um, um, okay. Expected uh, symbol in the place in the place of the functor name, right? Something like that. So for now, we're gonna just panic. Uh, all right. So and in here we just have a new name. Right, so that we have to use in here. Right, so this is the new name that we can apply in here. Right. Mm, yeah, so that that's pretty pretty straightforward. And then we can have the new arguments, right? And when we do new arguments, we just right iterate all of that and nothing particularly special. So in args, right, in new args push substitute bindings so this is the bindings this is the args right and then we can construct essentially new stuff right so this is a new name and this is the new args right and we perform this substitution i think so let's actually go through the compilation errors and yeah mm -mm. So trying to conversion to string, blah, 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 blah. So I wonder, hmm. So maybe I need to clone this entire thing, both of these. So can I clone it? Uh, consider changing to mutable. So this thing has to be mutable. And there we go. Interesting. So something got completely fucked up. Hmm. Hmm. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Do the work first try. God damn it. Uh, okay, so let me see where we made a mistake. Let me see, let me see. So we can start maybe with... Um, finding the places where we match all of that. Our name and Yune the same always. Uh, if this is a new name, this is a new name. I don't think so. Everything seems to be fine. Uh, I'm a little bit tired, so I probably need to make a small break, right? So it's starting to get a little bit difficult for me to reason about this entire stuff, and I also need to refill the water. So let's actually make a small break, boys and girls. Let's actually make a small break. Um, Okay, so let's try to understand what the hell is going on. So I'm going to try to understand what the hell is going on by just uh, going into the apply all. Right, so let's actually just start reading uh, this entire thing. Okay, so if something pattern matches, right, so ev every time something pattern matches, we, win we can try to just print this thing, right? So let's just... Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. Uh, match, and I'm just gonna go ahead and print the bindings. Um, bindings, there we go. Uh, let's see, how many times do we match? Uh, so this was the first time we matched, uh, and here we have B uh, assigned to G and A assigned to F of A, so that makes sense. And then uh, we have This is not correct, uh, I think. 
Or is it? I, I think it is correct. Okay, so... Uh-huh. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So, because we're matching, we're using this as a pattern, and then we're iterating with, like, these things. Uh, okay, so that, that makes sense, at least to me. Right, so cool. I didn't see any problems with this uh, particular thing, uh, though we may have problems with, like, substitution bindings and whatnot. Uh, so, in here... Um, hmm. And in the final result, we've got... This thing. Oh, I think I know what the fuck is going on. We should not substitute the expression. We should substitute the body because we're placing the hat with the body. Right, so essentially what we have to do, we have to use this pattern to get the uh, bindings. And then we have to replace this entire body, with, uh, this entire hat, with the body, but with the replaced variables okay that makes a lot of sense so because of that instead of this stuff we have to use self body right and that should do the trick there we go look at that look at that so this is the rule swap pair a b is equal to pair b a so here we have two swaps swap of pair f a g b and swap of pair q c z d and after applying the rule to all of the sub-expressions, we got foo, pair gb, right, original was fg and became gf, and then uh, qz and became zq. It literally, like, matched these sub-expressions and it actually swapped them. How about it? How about it? Isn't that poggers? I think it's pretty fucking poggers, right? You, you you have a rule and you have an expression. You just apply that rule to that expression and it works. Holy freaking shit. <clears throat> That's actually pretty cool. Hey, Lee, bro. Um, so... Yeah, the, the only problem with this system is that it's really tedious to write this shit like that. <laughs> it would be better if I uh, could just, you know, write things as they are, right? So like this, and then parse this entire thing into AST, right? And maybe even put all of these definitions in some sort of a, like a file, right? And have, um, you know, a function that loads rules, all of the rules from a file and then allows you to apply them to a particular expression, if you know what I mean. Right, so that will be kind of cool. That will be kind of cool. So we should work towards that. So maybe we're going to implement some sort of a parser. So I already had like 20 minutes left, so I'm going to spend this 20 minutes maybe preparing the repo and uploading all of that to GitHub, and we may work on the parser for these expressions maybe next time. Uh, because, yeah, so I had a pretty huge break and I'm already getting tired, so I don't want to really uh, do a very long stream after such a break, right? So I need to get back into stream. All right, so uh, let's uh, go. Uh, so I'm going to do git ignore and we're going to ignore the uh, executable knock. Uh, I'm going to like create a cargo uh, project, um, you know, off screen. Right, I'm not going to do it right now. Uh, read me mm, knock, not cock. So, not cock, and we're gonna just uh, put this thing in here. A simple, um, simple expression transformer, um, transformer that is not cock. Right, that's what it is. Quick start. For now, the quick start is gonna be essentially just Rust C knock uh, RS, and then just call knock. And that's going to be basically it. Uh, the license is going to be, of course, under MIT. You can do whatever you want with it. All right. And let's do git init. There we go. Eh. Uh, all righty. All righty. So I'm going to just do 
Ready, set, go. Um, mm -mm, simple expression transformer that is not cock. So let's create a repo. Let's quickly create a repo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is knock. This one is going to be public. Okay, cock, so didn't flushed. Uh, all right, so the source code of knock should be available already, so you can find it in here if you are interested, of course. Uh, and let me put that in the description. So knock is available. This is not really a good link. And I copy pasted git link. I should have actually copy pasted uh, HTTPS link. So the next thing to implement is a parser. Uh, but before you can implement a parser, you need Alexa, right? So essentially a program that can take a string like this and determine the um, lexems or tokens right split everything by tokens so in here you can have a token swap open parenthesis pair open parenthesis a comma and so on and so forth right so and it will be rather interesting to implement something like that so let's actually let's actually try so a token is supposed to be a symbol all right so you have symbol which is a string then you could have a uh, open parent right then you can have a close parent uh, then not clone close parent then you have comma and you have equals right so these are basically the tokens that we can have in here um, right it will be even better to define like this as a token kind, right? So this is a token kind. And then as a token, we could have a structure, right? Where you have kind, token kind. Uh, and here you have the text of the token, right? So the actual text of the token. Mm, right. And then we can define Alexa, right? Hmm. And Lexa could be an iterator, right? So Rust standard library has a system of iterators, which is actually rather sophisticated, right? And it allows you to abstract away sort of like a lazy things, right? So things that are not, um, that appear as you like pull them from somewhere, maybe from a file, maybe from a network, maybe you pre-compute them. So Lexa, we can create something like struct Lexa, could be in fact an iterator, uh, iterator for Lexa, right? And as far as I know, if we take a look at the at the iterator, uh, iterator, let me see, let me see. Yeah, it has like a type parameter. I don't remember. I don't know how it is called in Rust. Uh, I remember this kind of feature in Scala. I programmed commercially in Scala quite some time ago. So essentially, it's like a generic parameter, but it's part of the definition. So after you implement this specific interface, you have to say type item and you say that Alexa is an iterator where uh, each element each item of that iterator is a token right so this is basically what you, you what you can say and to make an iterator you have to also implement the method i think you only have to implement next right so essentially for this thing to be officially an iterator uh, you have to implement this method that returns the next token right so something like this uh, right and if you implement something like this you would be able to do uh, everything you can do with iterators, which is actually quite fascinating. I think you should be able to do the following thing. So let's let's remove everything in here, uh, right? So we can do something like this. Uh, maybe we could have uh, info Lexa. 
Uh, Impel lacks a fan from str, right? So something like s str, and here we would return self. Right, so this is a self uh, to do. Right, and we should be able to do something like lexa from str, and then uh, do something like for token in, and then just print each individual token, right? So if we manage to sort of like prove to Rust system that Lexa is an iterator over tokens, we will be able to do all sorts of things, including like for each. Uh, like token within the Lexa, so and that would be actually kind of cool. Mm, so, but we we need to like actually prove that somehow. Uh, do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. mm. What's interesting is that maybe Lexa is going to be a wrapper around another iterator. That's actually quite interesting. Uh, so an iterator over characters, if you know what I mean, right? And that way we'll be able to actually make it very abstract. We can make Alexa that can work with files, with network or with strings, right? Because you can have iterators over characters that uh, are coming from all sorts of things, right? So they're coming from a memory or maybe from a far file, network, maybe they could be pre-computed, uh, so it shouldn't matter. Uh, so we can say um, it's gonna wrap characters, but I think we should make this iterator a generic parameter, right? So I think we can define something like this. So it's gonna be characters, but this thing must be an iterator. And if I remember correctly, people said that it's called associated type. You can define associated type like this. You can actually provide it as a generic parameter, which actually proves what I said. It's like generic parameter, but it's named generic parameter it's kind of like weird but I mean, yeah so characters has to be an iterator of characters right and we can just wrap it around yes so that also means that oh my god here comes rust where if you want to <laughs> if you want to have generics that's what you have to do uh, though I think you can like maybe even do something like where, but it doesn't really matter. So it's just like whatever. Uh, here we can actually do something like from iter uh, and just do characters, uh, characters, and we can just return uh, characters like this, right? So we're constructing these things from characters, right? And this thing is a string slice, which means that it has a method characters, right? Uh, yes, string slice has a method characters, chars, which returns an iterator over characters. Yeah, yeah. so there is uh, the, the structure, which is an iterator over characters, uh, which is cool. All right, so we can do chars, and this one is gonna be from iter. Huh, and that's actually pretty cool. So, okay, huh, pretty cool. Um, let me try to just compile this entire thing and see how miserably it fails. Uh, so this is a token um, and token. Oh yeah, of course, we have to do something like this. So this is another implementation. Oh, oh okay, so this is uh -huh, enum. Derive, debug, debug. <laughs> it's like void, but it's debug. Uh huh. And let's actually put this thing in here. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, so it seems to be working. One five one, and it fails in here. Okay, so this shit compiled. All right, so we're going somewhere at least. Um. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So the next thing I need to do. I kind of need to be able to peek into into the iterator, if you know what I mean. I need to be able to peek into iterator. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So peek. Uh, what is that? 
actually very interesting. Pickable. An iterator with a pick that returns optional reference to the next element. And this is a structure. Oh, it's a structure that wraps an iterator and extends it and give it, gives it pick. It also has additional next if. Consume and return the next value of the iterator if... Oh, this is actually juicy. Okay, I think we can use that. Ooh, pickable. Uh-huh. What if I say something like pickable? Uh, something like that. Mm -mm -mm. How do we construct this thing? Oh. Alright, so there is a method pickable. Uh, God damn it. Pickable. Mm. So any iterator has a pickable method that can construct a pickable out of that iterator. Okay, that's cool. I think. Uh, yeah, it's pickable. Okay, cool. So that means I can do stuff like characters, pickable, and there we go. Cool. Mm, so that way we'll be able to, I guess, pick this stuff. Uh, but the first thing I need to do, I need to trim the white spaces. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Pika able. Uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. So, but I think I'm gonna continue working on this uh, Lexa uh, next time because I'm registering for almost two hours and I'm getting tired. But I think the idea of like making Alexa an iterator over tokens is actually a pretty cool idea. Um, yeah. And then you, you can even make the Lexa pickable so you can peek into the Lexa. I wonder how pickable is implemented. Does it just has a buffer where it just stores this entire thing? Uh, let's actually see. Oh god, this is so slow. Especially when I stream. Mm, so pickable. Uh huh. So let's take a look at the definition. So it's usually hidden, but we can take a look at the source code. Uh, oh yeah, so it basically buffers one single element. Okay, so makes sense to me. Remember picked value if it uh, if it was none. Yeah, so it's actually pretty cool. Right, makes sense. Uh, Broken Kernel, thank you so much for tier one subscription. All right, so we implemented like a very simple engine of knock, right? So we already can uh, define a rule, apply that rule and substitute things around. So it's, it's just like 80% of the system is already done, right? So the whole system is essentially apply all, right? It takes the rule and applies that to the expression, right? So the rest of the work is just building the, um, the rest of the system around that, right? So this is basically the whole thing. Um, so we, we now need to like put some meat on top of it. It's a skeleton and now we're putting meat on top of it. All right, so does anyone have any questions about what we've done today? Uh, does it make any sense, whatever we're we are trying to achieve? We're trying to build a very simple, like a AST expression transformer, which is not really cock, right? It just transforms expressions given the rules. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one and I see you next time, hopefully. Don't forget to check the donate link. Um, not donate link, but donate command. Uh, definitely check out the donate command. And uh, yeah, see you next time. See you next time. Love you. Stay safe. Mwah.